Hello, my name is Zibo Zhao, and today I'll be talking about DNA self-assembly. Traditionally, we think of DNA as a biological material for carrying genetic information. But in 1982, the field of DNA nanotechnology was invented when Seaman proposed the use of DNA as a structural material. He envisioned using DNA self-assembly for the bottom-up fabrication of well-ordered nanostructures. Since then, the field of DNA nanotechnology has exploded, and researchers have been able to synthesize cubes, octahedra, 3D lattices, and other nanostructures using DNA self-assembly. In order to understand how DNA self-assembly works, we must first understand the structure of DNA itself. The basic unit of DNA is the nucleotide. A single nucleotide consists of three parts, a nitrogen base, a monosaccharide sugar, and a phosphate group. In DNA, the monosaccharide sugar is a 5-carbon sugar known as deoxyribose, and the nitrogen base can be any one of four aromatic heterocyclic molecules, either adenine, thymine, guanine, or cytosine. Of these four nitrogen bases, adenine and guanine belong to a class of organic compounds known as purines, while thymine and cytosine are categorized as pyrimidines. A single strand of DNA is formed when the individual nucleotides are covalently joined by phosphodiester bonds between the third and fifth carbons of adjacent sugar rings. The length of a single DNA strand can range anywhere from a few nucleotides to a few million. However, in living organisms, DNA exists not as a single strand, but as a double helix composed of two interwoven DNA single strands. This double helix is stabilized by both hydrogen bonding between complementary nitrogen bases and pi pi stacking interactions between adjacent nearest neighbor nitrogen bases. Importantly, these two strands exhibit a phenomenon known as complementary base pairing, in which purines selectively form hydrogen bonds with pyrimidines. In particular, adenine only forms hydrogen bonds with thymine, and guanine only forms hydrogen bonds with cytosine. In this manner, the sequence of nucleotides in one strand uniquely determines the sequence of its complementary strand. This type of complementary base pairing forms the foundation of DNA self-assembly because it allows for highly specific molecular recognition between complementary DNA sequences. Given the nature of complementary base pairing, the mechanism of DNA self-assembly is relatively straightforward. The DNA self-assembly process begins with careful selection or synthesis of single-stranded DNA molecules. These single-stranded DNA molecules are then placed in aqueous solution and annealed at an elevated temperature before being slowly cooled. During the cooling process, the single-stranded DNA molecules can minimize their total energy by forming double-stranded DNA via complementary base pairing. Ideally, this complementary base pairing process continues until the strands have settled or self-assembled into their energy-minimizing structure. If we have chosen our precursors carefully enough, then hopefully this self-assembled final energy-minimizing nanostructure is exactly the nanostructure we were aiming for. To develop a process model for DNA self-assembly, we can consider what happens when two single-stranded DNA molecules hybridize to form a double-stranded DNA molecule. We can define a stepwise process for this type of hybridization as shown. Here, each step involves the formation of a bond between exactly one pair of nitrogen bases. We can view this bond formation as a pseudochemical reaction with an associated free energy change in equilibrium constant. To find the total free energy of formation of the double-stranded DNA molecule, we can sum the contributions from each individual step. However, a simple sum of base pairing interactions would ignore strong pi-pi stacking interactions between adjacent bases. Thus, a more accurate model should include the effect of nearest neighbor stacking interactions on the free energy change. Furthermore, we should note that the formation of the first base pair comes with an intrinsic entropic penalty in bringing the two single-stranded chains together in the first place. Thus, formation of the first base pair contributes an extra nucleation energy to the free energy of formation. With these considerations, the total free energy of formation of the double-stranded DNA molecule is given by the first equation on the slide, where the sum on the right-hand side is taken over all base pairs. Notice that this analysis can still hold even when the two single-stranded DNA molecules are not fully complementary. We can still associate a free energy cost with forcing two non-complementary nitrogen bases together. By doing so, we can calculate the free energy change for hybridization even in mismatched strands. Indeed, if we do this, we will find that although the energy minimizing configuration is always perfect complementary base pairing, it is possible to form a metastable mismatched DNA molecule, which may occupy a local minimum in an energy landscape. 
In fact, the probability that any duplex with a free energy of formation delta g sub i is formed can be determined from statistical mechanics, and the expression is given at the bottom of the slide, where z is the partition function that includes all other allowable double-stranded structures. Therefore, in order to maximize yield of the desired nanostructure, we must not only ensure that the desired structure is energy minimizing, but also that the desired structure is much more energetically stable relative to all other allowable configurations. At this point, we have captured many of the salient features of the thermodynamics and kinetics of the DNA self-assembly process. However, there are a couple other process parameters that we should mention before we wrap up. First, the stoichiometry of the single-stranded DNA precursors must be carefully controlled to avoid the formation of undesirable side products. Second, the base pairing interactions between the single-stranded DNA precursors is critical to the final self-assembled nanostructure, so these oligonucleotide sequences must be engineered so that the desired final structure is selectively formed. Fortunately, researchers have developed a number of algorithms for achieving this type of selective control, such as sequence symmetry minimization. Today, many of these algorithms have been programmed into user-friendly computer-aided design programs that expedite the design of such precursors. Finally, since DNA is a charged molecule due to its negatively charged phosphate groups, the stability of the molecule depends strongly on the pH and salt concentration of the environment. If the salt concentration is too low, the electrostatic repulsion between phosphate groups will favor separation into single strands and duplexes will not form. At high salt concentrations, positive ions from the salt can shield these negative charges and promote the formation of double-stranded DNA. Further, if the pH of the solution is too high or too low, the DNA will also tend to separate into single strands. Hence, the self-assembly process should be performed in an aqueous environment with a sufficiently high salt concentration and a pH buffered around neutral. The use of complementary base pairing to create double-stranded helical DNA nanostructures has already led to the development of multi-dimensional self-assembled lattices, hydrogels, and templated nanomaterials, but progress is still being made. In 2006, Rothbund made a key breakthrough in DNA nanotechnology with the discovery of DNA origami. In DNA origami, instead of relying on the self-assembly of short, single-stranded DNA precursors, instead, short single-stranded sequences called staplers are used to guide the self-assembly of a very long single strand of DNA. DNA origami has been able to create arbitrary shapes, such as the one shown in the slide, and avoids the necessity for precise stoichiometric control, since the stapler sequences can be added in excess and purified out later. However, cons consistently achieving high yields with the DNA origami technique remains elusive. DNA self-assembly strategies still remain an attractive option for templated nanomaterials because sequence tunability theoretically allows the creation of arbitrary shapes and length scales with nanometer scale precision. As research into DNA nanotechnology continues, a solid understanding of the self-assembly processes following the process model outlined previously will be a necessity for the creation of nanostructures with tunable properties at high yield.